Hi, I'm Dr. Barry Sears. We are here with the very famous author of The Zone Diet. Dr. Barry Sears, the world famous Dr. Barry Sears. This is a provocative book. It's called Toxic Fat. Listen to this. Some extra body fat can be good. Lean doesn't mean healthy always. Eating less, exercising more may not work. Obesity is a cancer. Wow! Dr. Barry Sears is with us. Good to see you. My pleasure. Most of people know you because I know Jennifer Aniston and Brad yep. Pitt were big fans of the Zone Diet. He's the doctor behind the amazing weight loss of Manuel Irabi, the world's fattest man. How many pounds did he lose? To date, it's about 440 pounds. That's astonishing. What the Zone is, is a real physiological place in your body where your hormones are kept within a zone that's not too high, but not too low. And I don't know if you necessarily, doctor, call this a diet as opposed to a different eating style. It is a different eating style, but it requires a little thinking. For every one gram of fat, you eat two grams of protein and three grams of carbohydrate. Now, why is that important? Because everything that's important in your life, your weight, your health, your longevity, your daily mental or physical performance, even your emotions, are controlled by hormones. And many of those hormones can be orchestrated by your diet. If you want a clinically proven way to keep your hormones in that zone, then the zone diet is your choice. If you're fat, it may not be your fault. I don't think anybody wakes up one morning and says, today, I want to get fat. But it happens. It happens to at least two-thirds of Americans. Now, People who basically become fat are not weak-willed individuals. They're simply genetically predisposed under the right dietary conditions to begin to accumulate large amounts of fat and make it very difficult to release that fat. Today in America, we are in big trouble. Make no mistake about it. Uh, we are in big trouble because our healthcare system and the fiscal future of our country is in great jeopardy as a consequence of this perfect nutritional storm which has opened a Pandora's box of inflammation that's causing us to become fatter, sicker, and dumber. And unless we go back to the ground zero to reduce toxic fat, we'll be constantly in a constant struggle of asking why, why is everything going wrong in America? It's often said it's harder to change your diet than to change your religion. So I'll say, I'll, I'll take that. What else can you do? Well, you have one last uh, tool, a tool your grandmother used very effectively, and that is taking adequate levels of fish oil to slow down the conversion of omega-6 fatty acids in the toxic fat. Two generations ago, no child could leave the house unless they had a tablespoon of cod liver oil, the world's most disgusting food. No question about it. It still is the world's most disgusting food. But it contained about two and a half grams of omega-3 fatty acids, enough to control and slow down the formation of toxic fat. Ask any obese person, are you hungry? They say, I can, I'm consumed by food the moment I wake up until the moment I go to bed. That's all I can think about. They say, well, how can you be consumed by food? You're fat. Well, as far as the body's concerned, they are starving. And when you're starving, hunger is a very, very powerful biological urge that has to be satisfied. I've spent my entire life telling people what they should eat. And uh, what you find, that, that dietary advice usually goes in one ear and out the other. Because people's food choices are formed very early in life and are hard to change. So rather than telling people what to eat, I decided about five years ago it would be more productive to ask them what they will, will eat. Because then you'll have compliance. And most Americans will tell you exactly what they like to eat. They like to eat pizza, pasta, and pastries, the three Ps. So I reasoned that since I've never seen a pasta tree or a bagel bush, because they don't <laughs> exist, I say it should be possible to basically reconstruct 
a bagel or a pizza or a pasta, they have a different balance of protein to carbohydrate to generate the right hormonal response. What causes us to be hungry in the first place? Actually, it's inflammation in the brain. If you can now control that inflammation by the diet, and more importantly, control satiety by changing the foods we like to eat, then dietary compliance comes easy. This is why we developed this technology, really for, for helping diabetic patients to control their blood sugar. If you ask a diabetic patient, what is your favorite food? Number one choice, always, white bread. They say, no, don't eat that. They say, I love white bread, I want to eat it. So we figured if we couldn't you know, bring Muhammad to the mountain, we'd bring the mountain to Muhammad.